Baseball League. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Leslie Frazier. Yeah. Hi, Leslie. Joining uh, Leslie up here is a dear friend of mine, former uh, running backs coach for the Minnesota Vikings, Dean Dalton. He's going to share in this interview, and I'd like to begin with uh, something I read from uh, from Jared Allen over the weekend, talking about the first speech that you gave to the defense. And Jared came out and said it was more motivational than anything Tony Robbins has ever done. <laughs> and I know you, uh, you're, oh, you're, you're fiery. You were 21 with the Bears, right? Yes, I did. I mean, I knew when back when you were 21, trying to stay away from Mike Ditka. I know you had some fieriness to you yes. but you're, you know you, you don't you, you don't swear you don't punctuate things with swear words and um, and you get your point across a different way you're not a screamer what um, what was the speech uh, what made the speech so good and what'd you like about it well I don't know if there was anything that made it so good you know uh, but well, Jared thought it was unbelievable yeah. but you know the thing I try to stress to our guys is the great opportunity that we have before us and um, you know I mentioned to him and you know this Paul and, 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 and you know, we lost a, a very good friend a, a few days ago in Philadelphia, uh, yep. yes. Jim Johnson, who uh, meant a lot to me. And I just told our guys, man, you just never know from year to year uh, what's going to happen in this league. And we just have to take advantage of every opportunity we have. And I think we have a great opportunity uh, with this, this 2009 Minnesota Vikings team having a great season. So yeah, we got to do what we got to do on our side of the ball. We got the team winning championships. Yes, you do have to get it done, uh, uh, Leslie, and you know, obviously we know you cannot win it. In reference to Paul's uh, calling the, at the track, you can't win the Kentucky Derby on a donkey. And you have a you have a stable of thoroughbreds and some really quality quality guys that play really well together. And what's the emphasis in your scheme? How much do they have to have trust and confidence that they're each going to do their own assignment? Well, that's everything. We talk about that all the time, man. We got so many good players that you don't want egos to get in the way. You don't want guys to start, start thinking about their individual stats, which could really harm uh, you know, our football team and our defense in particular. So. Uh, uh, we stress the, the, the team part of it, you know, all 11 guys doing their job. And, uh, we, we, if we do that with the talent that we have, we'll be successful. Absolutely. With the front four that you have, uh, it allows you to get a lot of pressure up front uh, without having to bring the linebackers. And that gives you the luxury of bringing them sometimes. That's, I mean, that's big for us to have guys like Jared and Ray and then when Kevin gets in there and even Pat at times, you know, doing some things for us. Uh, it just allows our secondary to be better. That's one of the reasons we really improved so much a year ago with our secondary. It's, it's a luxury that a lot of teams don't have, and uh, we're fortunate. Absolutely. And you're fortunate to have both your cornerbacks locked up for a little while with Cedric and Antoine Winfield. That, um, uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't question it with these guys because they're both consummate professionals, but as you know, because you're a great football mind, you've been around the game forever, it works one of two ways. Sometimes people get that money they've been looking for for a long time, and then it weighs them down during the games, if you know what I mean. But Winfield's not that kind of guy, huh? Not at all. I mean, Antoine, he's uh, number one pick. He's a customer to making a good salary in this league and yeah. uh, you know both of those guys are, are very professional, both Cedric and Antoine, and they're two people that are uh, great athletes, tremendous players, but uh, you can count on them to come in and, and, and give you everything they have every single day. I mean their new, their new contracts won't affect uh, the fact that they're outstanding players. Let me ask you this, because Ray Ro Ray Rhodes told Pete Bursich and yours truly this three years ago, and you've now been a defensive coordinator for a while, won a Super Bowl and everything. Ray Rhodes said Antoine Winfield diagnoses a play at the line of scrimmage better than any player he's ever seen in the NFL. A have, a have you seen better? I mean, is he right up there with the all-time greats at that facet? I would have to say he's right up there with the all-time Greats. I, you know, I coached a guy in Philadelphia and, and Troy Vincent, who I thought was outstanding mm -hmm. in, in that area. Uh, but Antoine, not only does he diagnose and, and see things and anticipate so well, but once he gets there to finish the plays the way he does, I mean, there's nobody that finishes plays, whether it's tackling or making a play on the ball, uh, than, than, than Antoine Winfield. He's the best. And I, I've, I've stated time and time again that, you know, Twan is, is uh, the by far the hardest hitter in you know, pound for pound is the hardest hitter in the NFL and like you said he's a finisher and how important is that uh, carry over where the young guys get to, to learn from from a, you know how to how to finish a play well when you when you talk about uh, people like
Asher Allen and, 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 and Marcus McCall and some of the guys that are that are watching them play, it's a dream come true for them to practice with a guy like Antoine Winfield who, I mean, every day he comes to practice, it's game life. So it's, it's great for their careers. They get a chance to find out what it takes to be the best in the National Football League. And it's a luxury that uh, a lot of players don't have a chance to experience, uh, to be around a guy like an Antoine Winfield. You know, a lot of the talkability with the Vikings, obviously, in the offseason involved that quarterback. Now you got Percy signed. People are going to look at, okay, how's the center spot going to do? How's the rookie right tackle potentially going to do? One thing that intrigues me a lot, it seems, and, it, and it intrigues me a lot every year, but this year it's different, is your nickel cornerback spot. I mean, you got Cedric, you got Antoine. You should have a vicious battle for that uh, for that third cornerback spot between like McCauley, Sapp, Asher Allen. We've got Carl Payma in here. Special teams, I understand that, but right. he probably wants to play more. That's going to be a good battle. Oh, no question. It's already beginning to shape up that way right now. I mean, they are good battling for that third corner spot, and uh, it's great competition, which is good for our football team. And uh, we're anxious to start playing some games and just see how it all shakes out. But it's going to be great competition. Vikings defensive coordinator Leslie Frazier with Dean Dalton. I'm Paul Allen. Dean? Hey, uh, Leslie, we just heard in the background some of these Viking fans uh, passionately singing happy birthday to E.J. Henderson. How nice is it going to be to get E.J. healthy and back after losing him so early in the season last year? Oh, it's huge. I, you know, I can't even put into words how important he is to our defense and what he does. Well, for me personally, just knowing he's back. <laughs> yeah, uh, the comfort zone. Yes, uh, without question. But uh, for our other players as well, you know, he's one of those guys who makes a lot of splash plays, uh, a lot of big plays that gets everybody excited. Our fans, uh, the coaches, his teammates, and he raises everybody's play. It's almost like those guys in basketball. You see a great dunk and you go like, oh, and you know, everybody else gets charged up. Well, EJ has that same type of effect on his teammates. He's a tremendous leader for us. And he's a great player. I, I was just in a place you're familiar with, Bears training camp uh, mm -hmm. yesterday, and I spoke with uh, Jason McKee, uh, the fullback. Uh, he remembers EJ Anderson pretty well. <laughs> I bet he does. Yeah, he had a little uh, bit of a yard sale when EJ yeah. blew him up. <laughs> yeah, EJ uh, really cleaned his clock, and uh, he's done that to a few guys. He's, he's a special player. Absolutely. <laughs> anybody, uh, anybody tease Bobby Wade about that little Jay Cutler thing? Oh, yeah, he got a little razzing, and uh, he got some admonishment as well, so hopefully we won't uh, hear any more comments. Urlock, Urlock. Urlock. And I, I guess you were the one who kind of enticed him and led him on. Ah, you, really? you got a little bit of the blame as well. Here's the deal, Leslie. We can take part of your salary Instigator. and take part of my salary. We can listen back to it at KFAN.com. If you think I incited uh, it, then you win. I did not. I, yeah. I asked him, here, here's how I went into it. You were a college roommate of Lance Bray. Okay, at Arizona. Has Lance had anything in the offseason to say about his new quarterback, Jay Cutler? I brought up Lance Briggs, and then all of a sudden, Bobby just went. So, uh, so you know Bobby so well, man. That's a leading question. You let him into well, it. Yeah, you paid him. Into it. You paid him. Right. You paid him. So it's going to be uncomfortable for the old announcer around the facility this year, is what you're telling me. <laughs> That's right. I, I, uh, again, the Bears had their take on this as well. So I spoke to both Jay Cutler and Brian Urlacher on that topic. And uh, Brian said, I got it all smoothed out with Bobby. Yeah, but he said, but watch it if he's on a dig route. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. If I were Brian, I'd yeah. try to keep myself healthy for that uh, that late season game and not worry yeah. so much about felines or Bobby Wade. <laughs> uh, with that said, you mentioned earlier, seriously speaking, the um, the passing of Philadelphia Eagles defensive coordinator Jim Johnson. What? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, you've been around it a long time, and you played for Buddy Ryan. I mean, yeah. you remember they carried Buddy. You guys carried Buddy Ryan off the field yes. with Mike Ditka after you beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. So that's how respected he was. You talk about respect. Jimmy Johnson, he was loved. No question. I mean, the, the, the players loved him. Uh, obviously, the coaches did, but the fans as well. I mean, everybody enjoyed his style of coaching and, and the person that he was. And uh, he'll be sorely missed. He was a great person and a great friend and uh, a mentor in a lot of ways to me personally. Yep, no a, a, a huge leadership void there in Philadelphia, uh, as well as the fact that he was a, just one of the ultimate uh, creative schemers. Mm. Uh, we hated going against your Philly defenses because you know that Jim would come with you at with your blitz and as soon as you figured it out he had the counter ready to go and he was so so outstanding at his uh, defensive schemes no question i mean the, the word genius is sometimes overused in, in our business but in, in a lot of ways uh you know he was a genius in what he did your uh, in closing your son uh played cornerback played defensive back in multiple positions at eden prairie high school yes. what's his name again corey corey
story. He's um, he's now heading off to play college football at yes. Rice, correct? At Rice University, and uh, they actually just finished their summer conditioning, and they opened up training camp on August 7th. Wow, that's, that's pretty be. exciting for that day. How, how about that, man, from a player to an assistant coach to a defensive coordinator to a son going off to college, yes. Leslie? Leslie's an all-pro day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.